Thanks, Paul. And uh, thanks for the invitation, citizens in charge, to come here to speak at the conference. Rick, I'm uh, the chair of uh, Fair Vote, the Center for Voting and Democracy. I'd like to acknowledge our, our fellow board member, William Redpath, who's also on the board. Came up, uh, as he stint as the ch national chair of the Libertarian Party. Uh, and uh, Stephen Hill, who uh, was with New America and was with Fair Vote. And uh, he's been a real influence on the uh, political ideas that have uh, inspired me. So how did I get into politics and election reform? Somebody who's like a rock music celebrity, I could have picked a sexier issue than election reform. <laughs> and um, it was basically, well, hey, Chris, you're the bass player of this band. Why don't you go to this, uh, have a concert or have an event to get young people to turn out and vote? And uh, I discovered real fast that it's not about uh, putting on a dog and pony show for young people or anybody. It's about having an election system that invites people to participate, to have a competitive democracy. When I lived in Seattle, the 43rd district, uh, I think the 7th congressional district, uh, heavy, heavy democratic districts, okay? These uh, legislators run unopposed year after year. So why have a get out the vote uh, concert for them? Who cares? They're going to get elected. Anyway, and that's one thing you need to say about the initiative process. That, okay, two-thirds of the legislature or more is uncontested or has an uncompetitive race, but if you have a ballot initiative or a referendum, that'll bring voters out. It'll get people involved, and that's how we get a lot of change. There's, there's legislators who won't touch a lot of things, and it's a, where you get real reform is through the uh, initiative process. Uh, I wanted to talk about another uh, a hero of mine, uh, William Uren. I made this photograph, or I blew up this photograph from the internet. This is William Uren. He's been referred to as the most, some have referred to him as the most important Oregonian ever. He's also, William Uren has been referred to as the father of the initiative. And it was in 1893 that Mr. Uren, uh, the Oregon Grange, and uh, other reformers started to push for, ish for initiative and referendum in Oregon. And that was out of frustration with the Oregon legislature being controlled by corporations, party bosses, centralized power. In fact, in 1899, for better or worse, the Oregon legislature didn't pass one single bill. <laughs> and we didn't have a very productive legislative session. That made voters even more frustrated. So 1902, Oregonians passed the initiative and referendum. That was the first state in the Union to do so, direct democracy. So that opened the doors for Mr. Uren's imagination. The uh, Oregonian called him Uren Urenisms. <laughs> His idea that he got on the ballot, like universal suffrage, direct election <laughs> of uh, United States Senator. He got um, recall on the ballot, uh, campaign expenditure uh, limitations. And in 1908, he put on the ballot a proportional, a unicameral uh, legislature for Oregon with proportional voting. And in fact, he, he got the state constitution amendment uh, amended to compensate it. And it wasn't just like Euro party list system, it was a pre preferential ballot, also known as uh, ranked choice voting, single transferable vote. And it failed twice. The urinism of proportional voting failed twice. So, um, as chairman of Fair Vote, what, one of the things we're doing is promoting proportional voting. And it's a lot of work. Most, you ask most Americans, like, what's that, Chris? Is that a parliamentary system? It's like, no. There's a parliament, it's a system of government, proportional voting is a system of voting. There's a distinction. And then there's a, there's a big myth about the uh, fractured legislature where nothing gets done, these uh, uh, minority coalition partners that get all these concessions. That could be a problem with proportional voting. But there's an American tradition and version of proportional voting, or semi-proportional voting, single transferable vote, uh, cumulative voting, or the limited vote. And so at Fair Vote, we see a lot of opportunities with reapportionment in 2000, 
and 11. In 2001, the last time the uh, 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 nation was redistricted, the state and the, and the U.S. House, we had the tragedy of the September 11th uh, terrorist attacks. And so that dominated everything, and that put a veil over what the uh, gerrymanderers were doing in making all these safety districts. Well, it's a different world right now. A lot more people are online, people with the blogosphere, left-wing bloggers, right-wing bloggers, centrist, uh, what have you. And people have more information. And what we also have is citizens have technology where there are these there are online applications where you can draw your own district. You can you all we all we're waiting for is the census information. In 2010, we plug it in. There's applications, free applications, professional applications. You can make your own district. So the citizen now has the tools when the uh, gerrymanderers or even an independent redistricting commission they make a map for your state or for your county or your city. You can make your own map. And then you can compare the map and say, hey, wait a minute, why does this district look like that? Why are these people packed in this district? Why is this district cracked in half? Okay? And so what is a fair district? Well, it depends on who you ask. Okay? The Democrat who lives in a Democratic majority district is a fair district. Same on the Republican <laughs> side, okay? Or if you're on the wrong side of reapportionment, even though it's an independent redistricting commission, they followed all the criteria of putting it together, you're going to say, hey, okay, so for the next 10 years, I'm stuck in this political minority, but I pay taxes, I'm subjected to the rules and laws of the state. <coughs> okay? So that's why I, we feel that there are opportunities for semi-proportional voting systems, limited voting, cumulative voting, if not full-blown uh, proportional voting with a single transferable vote. And also there's people who want to, there's other types of voting methods. If you want to, if you want to push them in, in your city or state, Godspeed to you, okay? <laughs> We're pushing uh, reforms that are constitutionally protected. These are reforms that have a tradition in American law and in American history. And that's why I'm really excited about being the chair of Fair Vote right now. And I'm excited about 2011. It's like what Mr. Le Nick Nader was talking about, an informed citizenry, people paying attention. Well, here's an opportunity. Here's the problem. How do we get full representation, shared representation, proportional representation? There are ways to do it. It's not a Euro party list system. It's an American way to do it. If you're conservative, liberal, or whatever, and uh, gerrymanderers, political insiders, backroom deals, bring it on. We've got the technology. Thank you. Chris said he would take one question. Does someone have a question they want uh, to ask quickly? Music question. Yeah. Yes. Right over here. I want to know how he got the first initiative into law. How did he do that? It wasn't there, so he couldn't do it by initiative. <laughs> it was that people were so disenchanted with the uh, legislature. And there was enough voter unrest that the legislators went for it. He worked with the Oregon branch, and he worked with uh, influential policymakers, and they did. He just beat up the whole legislature. And forced them into it. Wow. Great. Thank you. So things can change. Chris, thank you very, very much. Thank you.